Hi there, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox. This video is part one of a two-part series on how I approach fishing bunker chunks for striped bass. Let me start by saying that if your idea of chunking bass is to wheel out your cart or buggy onto the beach, pitch an umbrella and chair, lob a chunk, spike the rod, and listen to the ball game, then that's fine. If that's what you enjoy doing, then have at it. It's all good. On the other hand, my method of chunking is a little more proactive. It's a stripped down, stay mobile approach that is more akin to hunting striped bass. You're not sitting around hoping for a bass to find your bait. Instead, you are actively seeking their location and then making them an offer they can't refuse. I've always said, catching striped bass is usually not very hard. It's finding them consistently that's the trick. For more detailed information on where to find bass in the surf, check out my other videos on reading the beaches. So let's get started. The first order of business is your tackle, specifically the terminal end. For hooks, my preference lately has been for siwash hooks in sizes between 80 and 90, depending upon the manufacturer. I like the siwash hook because they have a wide gap, and the tip of the hook extends up about half the distance of the hook shank. This means you can sink the hook a little deeper into the chunk and still have a good amount of hook point protruding from the chunk. A couple other good hooks for chunking are the 90 Mustad Live Bait Hook and the 10O Gamagatsu Octopus Hook. You'll need to know how to snell hooks if you choose to go with the Gami Octos. For leader material, I use either 80 pound Andy Mono Line or 80 pound Andy Leader material. The Andy Leader material is a little stiffer and resists the toothy critters a little better, but both work fine for bass. For the swivel, I use an S-Pro 230 pound swivel. A 230 pound swivel may sound like overkill, but they are much easier to handle and tie in the dark with the heavy line I use. Lastly, you'll need a fish finder rig and some Hatteras style sinkers in weights from 5 to 8 ounces. If you can't hold bottom with an 8 ounce Hatteras sinker, then it is probably best to go find another spot, or go home. Here's how I tie up my rigs. First I nail a small finished nail into the surface of my bench and then clip the nail head off. I use this to tighten and test the rigs I tie. Start by attaching the leader material to the eye of the siwash hook using a Palomar knot. The Palomar knot has 100% breaking strength and is very easy to tie. If you don't know how to tie it, there are plenty of animations on the internet to tell you how to do so. Trim the tag in and then attach the other end to the swivel, again using a Palomar knot. Try to keep the leader length between 8 and 10 inches. The shorter leader length makes the whole rig much easier to cast and the bass don't seem to notice. After tying both sides, slide the running line side swivel loop over the nail and pull to tighten everything up. After that, store in a Ziploc sandwich bag until needed. Next up, you'll need a way of carrying your bunker around with you. You can use a soft cooler bag or a small box type cooler, which is what I've been using lately. Regardless of which type you use, they should both have at least one zip type pocket for storage and a shoulder strap for easy transport. The cooler area should be large enough to carry 8 to 10 adult bunker and ice. In addition to your bunker, what you'll need to bring with you are a pair of pliers, a couple spare rigs, fish finders, and some sinkers. You'll also need a knife for cutting the bunker. A cutting board isn't necessary, just cut the bunker in the sand. Optional items include a tape measure for measuring your fish, your cell phone in a plastic bag, sunscreen if you fish during the day, and bug spray in case the breeze dies. Remember, the object here is to travel light and stay mobile, so leave the sand spikes at home. Now let's talk about bunker. The short version is the fresher the better, and if it's been frozen, don't even bother. Fresh bunker is key, and care should be taken to keep it in the best shape possible. Fresh caught bunker have clear eyes, firm flesh, and lots of slime. And to keep them that way, I have a specific way that I store them in a cooler. You'll need some gallon sized Ziploc freezer bags, a bucket half filled with water, and lots of ice. I start by putting two or three adult bunker in a Ziploc bag and then closing the Ziploc on the bag to about three quarter closed. Then I submerge the bag, bottom first, into the bucket of water until just below the remaining open area. This is the poor man's version of a vacuum packer, as all of the air in the bag is forced out by the pressure of the water. I then finish sealing the top of the bag and presto, vacuum packed bunker. 
In the cooler, you place some ice on the bottom, then a layer of vacuum packed bunker, then ice on top of that, then another layer of bunker, and so on. This will keep the bunker much fresher and in much better shape for far longer than just throwing them in ice. Sounds like a lot of effort, but as I mentioned before, fresh bunker is key, and I've had this demonstrated to me many times throughout the years, so trust me on this one. As far as rods and reels go, I'm old school, so it's conventional only for me when I'm chunking. But you should fish with whatever you have or whatever you're comfortable with. My main outfit for the beach is an older 11 and a half foot Lamy Glass Honey Rod with a Newell P335 reel spooled with 50 pound Andy Mono. I like chunking with Mono because it is more forgiving of mistakes when beaching a big fish. If spinning gear is your thing, then a hefty van stall reel on a stout Lamy Glass rod and 50 pound braid will get it done also. Just watch your fingers when landing a big fish in the wash as braided line can cut you deep. Whatever your gear, thread on a fish finder and tie on a rig using a Palomar knot. Throw your pack cooler over your shoulder and you're ready to hit the beach. Part 2 discusses what to do when you... That's my view from the beach, so until next time, be well and catch him up.